This is day one of frog dissection. This is the northern leopard frog. This is the dorsal side. This is the ventral side. His forearms, his hind legs, If you look on the hand, they have four digits. Read the thumb on both hands, four digits. This is the thumb. On their feet, they have five digits with a web membrane in between, which helps them swim through the water. You notice the ventral side is a lot lighter than the dorsal side. The dorsal side also has dark patterns on it to help them camouflage in the water. A predator from looking up, down, they can blend in. A predator from beneath, looking up, they look light, just as light as it does um, on the surface of the water, so they can blend in that way. We have what's called a tympanic membrane here on both sides. This is their eardrum. We have an eardrum, but it's in our inside of our ear canal. Their eardrum is on the outside. We have our external nares. They're the little holes right up here in the front. They're their nostrils external nares. Sometimes it's easier if you just feel for them. And then they have their two eyes. The upper eyelid is just like ours. It helps to protect the eye. Um, but they also have another part to help protect their eye. It's called the nictitating membrane. So if you lift up the eyelid a little bit, you get your tweezers and you can grab a hold of this membrane and if you lower it you can see the eye. These are like natural goggles so when they're swimming in the water they can keep their eyes open and look for prey uh, and nothing hurts their eyes like um, little things in the water, branches and plants and things like that. In the other eye it's the same. We have the upper eyelid and then we have the nictitating membrane can grab it with your tweezers and pull it underneath so you can see the eye. So the next part we're going to look inside his mouth. So you would lay him on his back and because his mouth has been closed for quite a while it's going to be hard to open. Um, so we are going to do some cuts on both sides of the jaw to open up his mouth wide. And that way we can see what's happening in there a little bit better. So we will get our surgical scissors. Put the sharp side in the corner of the mouth. And we're going to cut from here to about his shoulder right there. And you should hear a snap because we are cutting through bone, his jaw bone. Okay. So we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Just put the sharp part in here. Be careful not to cut yourself. Might take a couple of tries and it's going to take a little bit of muscle to open that up. So now that we have broken the jaw on both sides, we can pull down his lower jaw and take a better look at what's inside the mouth. Okay. So we have his tongue. Right now it's in a resting position, but it can expand long out. And if you see these little finger-like structures at the end, they kind of grab a hold of their prey and then bring it back into their mouth. 
That's one of the ways they can hold on to their prey. Okay, with these finger-like projections. Another way they can hold on to their prey, once they're in the mouth, if you get with your finger and feel along the top, it feels a little bit like sandpaper. Uh, this is called the maxillary teeth. They're not for chewing. They're for holding on to the prey so the prey doesn't escape. And then the last thing that they have to keep prey in their mouth and from coming out are these two little bumps here. These are called vomerine teeth. Okay, and if you get your finger and act like you're prey in there and kind of try and get out, you can feel that they're almost like Velcro. They're not letting the, the prey come out. It's, it's not meant to, to break up the prey. It's just meant to hold on to them because they swallow their prey whole. Um, these are, this is the inside of the nostrils, or these are the internal nares, the hole right here. So that's their nostrils, they can bring um, air in and out. So when they need to go up to the surface for air, they just stick the top part of their little uh, head out of the water. Okay, here's the other one. Okay, these are the, um, where their eyes kind of sit in, okay? On the other side of this is their eyes. Okay, now if we pull this further back, I got it. Um, you can see that there are bigger holes towards the back part here. Okay, this is the opening on the other side of their tympanic membrane, or this is the opening, um, it would be, like to us, it would be our inner ear. Um, their tympanic membrane, if you remember, is the eardrum on the outside, okay? And this is the holes on the inside. It's on both sides, okay? Then we have um, the gullet. So once he does swallow his prey, it goes down the gullet, and this leads to his stomach the gullet, which would be our esophagus. Okay, and then we have this other little structure here. It's kind of hard to see, but if you press on it with your tweezers, you can see that there's a slit opening right here. To us, this would be our trachea. This is the opening to the lungs. And you can get your tweezers in there a little bit and open this up. That's the opening to the lungs. This is the glottis. The glottis. The glottis goes to the lungs. The gullet goes to the gut. The gullet goes to the stomach, and that's where the food goes. The glottis goes to the lungs. That's really all we're going to look at on the outside. Tomorrow we are going to do um, a long incision here and off to the side and then open up and look at internal organs um, and if there's extra time you can take a picture as long as you're following directions.